Black History Month is a time to honor triumphs of African Americans throughout history, but students and parents at Nyack Middle School raised the alarm after a racially insensitive meal was offered on the first day of the month. I mean, I really can't believe that we're talking about this, like steel. Now, instead of Philly cheese steak, famous in Philly, broccoli and fresh fruit that appeared on school lunches uh, on the calendar, uh, our mark, the food service company that provides meals to that district serve chicken, and waffles with watermelon. Now back in 2018, another racially insensitive meal was served at New York University during Black History Month that included barbecue ribs, collard greens, cornbread, Kool-Aid, and watermelon flavored water. The company apologized and workers were actually fired. So back in Philly where school officials say Aramark has committed to partnering with the school to offer, I'm hoping what would be sensitivity training for its employees. A school district in upstate New York has issued an apology after a post showing three students posing with a snowman. It was deemed offensive. The photo, which was circulated on social media, omits the underage pupils, uh, but showed their ice cold pal and what some considered snowman blackface. Superintendent for Kokosaki Athens Central School District stated, quote, it was never his intention for anyone to feel any grief over the snowman that was covered in dirt by the district students and used to signify diversity. He said, we want to apologize and reiterate it was never intended to be hurtful. Now, according to local news station Fox 5, the since deleted post brought a flood of comments where Greene County residents called the image racist. Now, Courtney, mm -hmm. we saw this image this morning. <laughs> It's, first I'm of not, all, it's dirty snow, but I think with the black kids standing behind it and then you get into the comparisons, I can see how we can land at a conversation like this, you know, a debate. The, the Post stated that the snowman is just as diverse as our students. That's the problem. Huh? That is the problem. What? Huh? <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, you know, I understand that, you know, you know, you know kids make mistakes and uh, I understand you know, that that happens routinely, but uh, this is more than just being hurtful. You yeah. know, th this, this was deliberate. Uh, there is no connection between a dirty snowman, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, celebrating diversity. Yeah, I say you get at the, I don't know if it was teachers, assistant teach, I don't know, you get at the people who, who actually, because it could have been an innocent uh, construction, if you will, of a snowman, but then when it could have been, uh, you know, with some dirty snow, but then, you know, you, you add in some sideways adult and, and their filter and, and their way of thinking uh, and, and just speaking out a term and then including the young people in on it. Again, we land at this at this conversation as far as an update to the story is concerned. Uh, the district is now, you know, reviewing some of their social media policies and, and maybe some things that they need to put into place to better police situations like this but all in all I think it rests with the adult uh, which I'm assuming could have been a teacher with the adult who you know put uh, you know the words in a, a, into action and assign those words to that snowman and and I'm hoping um, something can be done about that maybe it's back to sensitivity training no different from the situation with the uh, Aramark and the, and the food you know actually the situation in New York where they were serving the greens and the and the and the fried chicken and so on and so forth I really don't see a problem with that in Black History Month but it's the presentation yeah you I know it needs to be hey this is this is soul food this mm -hmm. is something traditional in the black community it's the presentation I think that's all and I think both stories really represent teachable moments mm -hmm. right and so mm -hmm. what an opportunity when it comes to you know the R mark uh, uh, issue in the cafeteria you know what does their school curriculum look like I mean let's really connect the dots Courtney right we're living in a time where we see, you know, efforts to uh, erase black history uh, from school curriculums. Well, you know, maybe if, if we leaned into it and we uh, enhanced uh, these curriculums related to black history, students can actually learn about the history of collard greens and the history of some of the, the foods that, we ha that our, our communities have enjoyed over the years. Maybe they could learn why a dirty snowman, you know, has no link to diversity. There's nothing about that that is supportive, that is affirming, that is about building community and making people feel like they belong.
And we just got to use some common sense. That's that's really what it is all about. And some humanity. We've been talking a lot about humanity later, uh, lately. All right, organizations or organizers rather of the Black Men's Brain Health Conference have invited leading researchers and community leaders to address the brain health challenges facing black men this week at Arizona State University. The two day conference will examine how various risk factors contribute to black men's higher risk for Alzheimer's disease, dementia and other brain disorders. The conference will also explore how the brain brain's ability to adapt to significant sources of stress affect men's cognitive health. Conference registration is free and is available for in-person or virtual attendance. For more details, uh, visit uh, mensbrainhealth.org. Structural racism creates barriers in housing, employment, and economic opportunities for black people and other people of color. Now, a new study has found that it can also have a harmful impact on children's brain development. The study published recently by the American Journal of Psychiatry found that black children are disproportionately exposed to adversity in early life, which may contribute to race related differences in brain structures as compared to white children. Factors including marital hardship, neighborhood disadvantages and trauma history led to greater disadvantages for black children, but income was the greatest factor reflected in the disparities of gray matter development, confirming data from previous studies on how low socioeconomic status and low income can negatively affect the brain. Now, I think for the latter uh, part uh, of uh, those insights, Courtney, um, I think for some of our soulmates, they may say, okay, water is wet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I don't mm -hmm. think people are, are surprised that, you know, uh, having a lower income uh, you know, uh, can affect the brain development because low income, you know, probably means that it's harder to get, you know, uh, nutritious food. It, it's harder to, uh, you know, enjoy the aspects of life uh, that, uh, that, that don't involve heavy releases of, of, of cortisol, the stress hormone, you know, when people don't feel safe. Yeah, for me, I appreciate the statistics and the research, and I know that, that we have to do that because it's a part of what we do. <laughs> we study each other. Uh, but listen, black people have always been resilient as our, our children. And I've, you know, I've mentored plenty of children, uh, you know, throughout my years um, from some very, very dark, disadvantaged situations who still continue to soar, whether it's just something innate in them that, uh, you know, people continue to celebrate and point out to them, or they just have a very supportive, um, village. Uh, so I think we've just been conditioned to, uh, you know, maintain and to stay resilient despite uh, some of the disparities and some of the disadvantages that we as a culture and a community uh, a lot of times uh, have to deal with. And, and as we work to move those barriers out of the way, I think it's important in particular that we focus in on our young people to let them know that despite, you know, where you may come from or what you've been, what you've been faced with, unfortunately and unfairly at such a, a, a young age, you still can make it. I have a young lady uh, who just lost her mom um, and, and, and throughout her mom's decline maintained a 4.2 GPA. It, it can be done. It's yeah. not to say that it's not difficult, but it can be done. And this is how we're going to have to continue to raise and or condition and inspire our young people until we as adults move these barriers out of the yeah. way. I think both can be true. I think it's, it's, it's important for us to be able to tap into our resilience. Mm -hmm. um, and there are plenty of powerful demonstrations of folks that have done that. Um, but I'm also thinking about, you know, what researchers call the weathering effect. Uh, you know, it's, this re it's, it's research that suggests that the effects of racism have a weathering effect on our minds and our health uh, over time. Uh, and so, you know, racism, uh, dealing with white supremacy violence, you know, it is, it's not just, a, you know, uh, an attempt to make us feel safe and make us feel like we belong, um, but it has actually far-reaching consequences in terms of the health of black people. And so, to me, that was, you know, one of the big insights that mm -hmm. came out of this research. Yeah, I get that, but we got to keep going. We got to keep going. During Black History Month, many students are being tasked with assignments about our culture. That's right, and there's one school that's having an art contest for Black History Month, and there's some pretty great work to choose from. Take a look. 
These are the finalists of the Black History Month art contest through the Boys and Girls Club of Greater Milwaukee and U.S. Cellular. It's our seventh annual Black History Month art contest. It always brings the excitement around this time. From Ruby Bridges, a six-year-old who defied a mob to desegregate her school, to Mae Jemison, the astronaut who defied gravity, becoming the first black woman to travel into space. Robert Smith with U.S. Cellular says the competition brought a range of ideas. There was a focus on the STEM field. And it's just important to give back, right? We know how important it is for our youth to learn about STEM figures, whether the past, pre- present, influential leaders, and just how much African-Americans have actually contributed to society from that aspect. This Black History Month project doesn't just require a lot of creativity. Students have to do their research, too. They end up learning their heritage. They learn about the men and women who blaze a trail for them today. I think it's really giving the young people a moment to just pause and understand their greatness, right? Like, and that they come historically from greatness. Oftentimes it's hard uh, to be able to see that when you're in a neighborhood where it's filled with violence, filled with crime. Voting is open to the public for the top spot. Deontay Lewis with the Boys and Girls Club says kids are honored to be recognized. I think it's an opportunity for everyone to be educated about it. Definitely appreciate appreciate that young brother. Yeah, that was great. It was a great story. Oh, yeah. Yes. Well, coming up, a Detroit denial uh, of the former mayor of the city is asking a judge for a break. Yeah, we'll tell you exactly what the request was and more. When we return, you are watching Fox Soul's Black Report. We'll be right back.